I'm like, Donald Duck has pet duck. Like, does anybody else find that weird? That was my tweet this morning. Well, some <laughs> jerk. That's a great question. Comes up. <laughs> I know, right? Valid point. <laughs> yeah, that very and valid. So, valid. And so some asshole says, uh, where do you keep your second place medal? Mm. I don't like on that. And oh, so uh, uh, my what? my reply is uh, bend over and I'll show you. So <laughs> yes! like, I, like, I like to troll people, you know? And uh, his, his only response was well played. So, you know, it's like. <laughs> well played. Name's Cole Luke. Play cornerback. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you. So yep. he came in his first year. Hey, hey Rich, yep. you, you don't have to act like you know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I remember the name Cole Luke. I watch. I, I'm, I'm a pretty, uh, pretty avid Notre Dame fan. I've been to at least a game a year for the past seven or eight years. So. Yeah. And I did go to that. I did go to that uh, playoff game. Unfortunately, man, they've kept it oh, organic. Yeah. At that stadium, I'm talking about the yeah. sound system is like you're the 1930s sound system and. You know, no replay hated screen. They, hated that they put the replay screen up because then nobody's on their phone. You know, yeah. like <laughs> everybody's watching the screen half the time. When you don't have a screen, it's like, hey, you actually have to pay attention. Is it to the a game? game. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. A, another elephant in the room that I think we need to address from the from the jump. Yeah, you are a uh, Detroit Lions fan, and you hate everything to do with the Cowboys. Is that right? I don't hate the Cowboys, no, not necessarily. Oh, we're getting uh, into that shit. I was actually <laughs> no, hey, press record. Let's go. Yeah, it's, hey, we're all we record. record. Yeah, yeah, let's we go. Yeah, yeah, we don't waste the conversation, right? Yeah, Let, let's get into that. So wait, wait, wait. Why do you hate the Cowboys? Let's get uh, let's go ahead and go there. Hey, I actually, to be honest, mid '90s when the heyday, I was yeah. I was a Cowboys fan. My mom was a huge Aikman, uh, Emmett Smith fan, Woodson and then fan, I decided yeah. I was actually there. You go, Woodson fan. Uh, <laughs> I was born in Michigan, though, so once again, I was blessed with that curse. And so I'm a huge Barry Sanders fan growing yeah. up. He was my childhood hero. Mm. Uh, so I am, a, I am, unfortunately, I am a Lions fan, and it's been a, been a rough life. You're going to have a kid or two. Yeah, yeah, all it. good, man. We, we all have little ones, so we're totally used to it, man. Yeah. This working from my home thing. My son might come in here and just take the whole thing down. So. That's all good. <laughs> hey, so how many times did Barry Sanders put, put this uh, guy here in, in the dude. spin cycle? Yeah. Let, me, <laughs> let me tell you. Man. Nightmares. <laughs> Yeah. Before playing incredible, Detroit, inc- incredible athlete. Oh, um, Ken, do you remember Kenny Gamble played in the league? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So he used to work for Reebok and was kind of one of my, our go-betweens. And he said Barry Sanders is one of the most impressive athletes to ever watch. Like just the power and just quickness and stuff. <laughs> um, he said it was incredible. So yeah, uh, yeah. I'll take his word. Darren back. still ices his ankles from those games. Oh man, I tell like, you what, still has to ice him down. <laughs> I, I tell you, we we played them about three. <laughs> three or four times throughout my career. And yeah. he was he was the guy the night before. Like, my brothers, I had two older brothers, and, and they would call me, and they'd say, hey, man, you ready for this? Yeah. And I'd say, yeah, yeah. And they said, just don't be a sports center highlight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't allow him to make – and I'm, so I go – I wouldn't sleep the night before because I knew I had to – Right. Be, I had to take care yeah. – you know, I had one-on-one situations where I had to deal with him. And uh-huh, it was man. Line of there. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was scary. Come on, scary. Kenny Norton, man, don't let him through no, the line. <laughs> I ugly. used to have the the Barry Sanders highlight tape. It was just called Barry, and I used to watch that thing on repeat all the time. It was, you know, like I said, that was on VHS back in the day. Oh uh, yeah, uh, for sure. Man, I for some he just was just I just liked the style of play. It wasn't you know super flashy, but man. Uh, just an incredible athlete. Yeah, he was. That's awesome. He was awesome. Hey, man. so last thing, be honest. When you saw Woodson on the email, did you were you hoping it was Charles Woodson? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, my, my cousin's a huge Michigan fan. Actually, man, I I watch a ton of ESPN stuff, so I've seen seen you on there a bunch. Um, but yeah, my my cousin's a huge Woodson fan, and see, I'm a I'm a uh, a UT Tennessee hater here because I'm I just Tennessee fans being not being from Tennessee and them being just Oh, obsessed best, with Tennessee. Yeah. I I love Charles Woodson because he beat Manning in the the Heisman that year. Oh yeah. And so it's, it's kind of <laughs> you know, I, I don't I'm not a Michigan fan whatsoever because I'm a Notre Dame fan. But that that whole you know situation for me and I don't dislike Peyton Manning. 
I just hate the fans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for some reason, <laughs> yeah. every year they're going to win the national championship, and they always fall flat on their face. Sounds like uh, some fans we have around here. Yeah, oh yeah. Super Bowl Same every day. single yeah. year. Every year, the expectations. Every year, that's yeah. awesome. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, I'm, I've trained Darren for a few years now, and, and I always tell people that I, I thought I was getting to train Charles Woodson, not Darren Woodson. <laughs> Aren't you so, the lucky one? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty lucky. So anyway, <laughs> so we want to jump into this, and, and yeah. everybody who's listening, I mean, your story has been out there for a long time now, and so if you don't know who this yeah. is, were, I mean, were you born in a barn for one thing, Yeah, and for two, uh, you just Google them. So we're not going to go through your whole journey, we're not going to go through your whole story sure. like we typically would, but we do want to yeah. highlight and, and touch on areas throughout, because I yeah. think uh, what's interesting about you is your mindset and, and mentally how you've separated yourself over the years. Obviously, physically, you're very gifted and you work really, really hard, but I think mentally is the more impressive thing, at least to, to us and to, mm. to maybe some of our listeners. So, appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. So 2009, or when, when did you first start CrossFit? Uh, so I started in 2009, in June of 2009. was just getting my uh, undergrad in exercise science. I was a firefighter. Uh, one, of our, one of my professors was the head strength and conditioning coach at Tennessee Tech, and he was just like, hey, uh, you're obviously into working out. This is your degree mm-hmm. and you're a firefighter. So a lot of military police fire do CrossFit. You should check it out. So, uh, that's kind of, you know, I was, I played some college baseball. Um, uh, I'm five, nine, I'm white. I hit from the right side. So <laughs> I'm a dime, I'm a dime a dozen. So I kind of saw the writing on the wall there. Uh, wasn't really hitting for power or anything like that. I went to Juco, uh, just decided college baseball. It, it kind of runs course. So I came back to Cookville. And uh, they had a program here. It was called Student Firefighter Program. So they paid my tuition. Um, I worked as a full-time firefighter, and I did that for four years. And so towards the end of that, I'm, I'm thinking that's going to be my career, but I just missed that competitive edge. You know, I grew up. I'm one of 25. Um, so I'm 32 first cousins on my mom's side. 25 of us are boys. Goodness. And the girls are just as competitive as the rest of us. And so uh, I just, you know, grew up in just competitive nature and, and just had that drive and so I was missing that piece of it and so I did a couple of those like firefighter tough challenges and stuff like that but then when I found CrossFit I was kind of hooked I didn't really even know you could compete but everything was like a you know you're competing against my cousin who was doing it with me at the time and so everything's head to head and there's always you know something that you could get better at you're going to get beat always so you're always trying to push mm-hmm. um, in, in certain areas so for me that was that was what drew me to CrossFit initially. Yeah. I, I remember, I don't remember when CrossFit actually took off or got started. Was it 2008, maybe 2007? Something yeah, like that. It was probably 2000. The games got real big, I guess. 2009 was the first year. Like I said, when I started, I didn't even know you could compete in it. I thought right. it was just a mm-hmm. for working out and all that. But then we saw these videos. So I'd say 2008. Yeah. So I remember this guy, shout out to Mark Rogers back in Abilene, where my hometown. And I remember nice. he would, he would, this was the first time, this was like 2008, we were in the football weight room in college, and I, I'd never heard of CrossFit before, didn't know what it was, and he'd be doing these barbell back squats, and then he'd go out the doors and run a 400-meter dash, and yeah, I thought yeah. it was like the weirdest, craziest, I thought he was smoking meth. I, I didn't know what, I didn't know what <laughs> well, he, he was doing. two things together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea what it was, so it was so bizarre to me when I first, and so I guess for you, because I have heard that, you know, you got into it because of because of your professor and, and firefighting, yeah. but what was it about CrossFit other than co- the competitive nature, which you touched on, like what drew you in so hard to think, Hey, this is something I really enjoy and want to keep doing. Yeah. I think it, like I said, it was, you know, I'd worked out pretty much since I was probably 13 or 14. You know, I started doing, just making up stuff in the, the living room, watching TV with my parents or whatever, just, you know, baseball, trying to get better at baseball, that type of stuff. And so I'd always liked, you know, fitness and doing those things and so I like I said I think just the competitive side of it like racing the clock there's so many different things you're never doing really the same thing every day it's always kind of changing up and so uh, for me those were kind of the main things that drew me to it but then it hurts and I don't know you just as bad as it sucks and as bad as you know it's going to suck when you come out of it on the other side you know you've gotten better physically mentally and, and even for me spiritually that's a huge part of why I do what I do is, is my faith but you know, I, I've just always kind of just been drawn to challenges, I guess. So when you're going through this pain, you know, you're going through this pain, right? Or yeah, you're about yeah. to go through the pain. Give us yeah. your mindset because there's so many people that when you're, when you, the anxiety of knowing that you're about to go put your body through this process is one yeah. thing. How do you overcome the fear going into that, 
you know, whatever it is that challenge you're about to go into. Yeah. And, and I think the fear is a good thing, honestly. I think, you know, the nerves of it. I mean, when you played in the NFL, like you're talking about, we were talking earlier, joking around about Barry Sanders, but that fear motivated you. It kept you coming back. It, it kept you to, it made you push. And so for me, I still get nervous. I get nervous, you know, doing workouts out in the barn training. Either one, I know how much it's going to hurt, or two, I know how fast I have to go. And so it's going to hurt that way. You know, it may be something short, but it's going to be more intense. And so for me, you know, over the years I've been doing this going on 11 years, I've realized that good things only come when it hurts, honestly. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you're – it's that's it's really in life in, in everything. Nobody grows when you're comfortable. And so knowing that, hey, like I'm in this pain, I'm in this hurt, on the other side I'm going to come out better for it. You know, maybe it's just small little things every day, but hey, it's like you know and you have to get comfortable with that pain and like you know when you get to that point, something good is going to come out of Mm, it. Yeah. Where do you think that comes from for you? Because that's not a natural, I don't feel like that's a natural response. (laughs) That's something you you work on and that's, that's kind of what we preach on here is, you know, people think people are gifted with things. And I, I argue that, that we're all, you can learn things. You can learn a lot of skills and a lot of, and that what you're talking about. So for you, right. where did that come from? I think honestly, it was a perfect storm of everything. You know, like I said, when growing up, um, being part of a big family, a competitive family, you know, now I realize having kids, you know, when we were kids, they were like, we let, you know, being from Michigan, we had these ponds that people swim in for, you know, recreation, you know, have pools, you have ponds. And so for us, it was like, hey, let's see who can run around the pond the fastest or let's see who can swim around the fastest. Growing up, you're like, they want to see which of one of us is the best. Now I realize all they were doing is trying to wear us out. But, <laughs> <That's> so <true. laughs> but it, man, it, it, you know, there was a drive, you know, you, you could, you're pushing, you know, it was even racing bikes around the pond, running around the pond, swimming around the pond. All my cousins, we're all pretty similar. We're all you know, we're into sports, we're all super competitive. And I think that was part of it. You know, my parents didn't really, uh, you know, my performance was never based, you know, like my, the love they had for me was never based on my performance, but they always pushed us. Uh, my dad was always like, you know, he wanted me to, to go out and do sports. My mom, the same way. I had a high school baseball coach that was incredible in just, you know, the type of person, uh, type of man I grew up to be and the competitor I became. Um, you know, having team sports growing up, I think is a huge, uh, advantage for not only, you know, in, in life, in athletics, but also just dealing with people. And so I think it's just, I, I can't pinpoint one specific thing. I think it's just kind of a perfect storm of all of those things. And, you know, a lot of things coming together at the right time in the right place. And so, um, I mean, I've, I've been blessed with the situation that I've been in, but yeah, I think it's, like I said, it's a the, the upbringing with the cousins and, you know, that type of thing. My parents were incredible and hard workers. Um, no matter what room you go into, my, my parents are the hardest two pe- working people in the room. I can guarantee that. And then, like I said, high school baseball coach that, you know, pushed us. And, and uh, man, we, we used to joke that we ran more than cross country and, and uh, the track <laughs> track squad. So that was always the joke. And, you know, hit mental Those toughness. Those foul poles to thing. foul poles, that's, that's a lot of room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we used to, he would just, I don't even know, now I look back at it and I'm like, there was no exercise science background to anything we did. It was literally, he just tried to put us in the dirt every single day. Hey, we, running I mean, sucks, now, let's make them do that. I know, right? Yeah, and let's, you know, he said he uh, he created CrossFit before CrossFit. CrossFit. That was, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. always a joke now. So. <laughs> that's funny. Hey, you know what, Ben and I had this conversation yesterday. We were, we were talking about, it was your first competition. And yep. you, we heard the story about was you were driving, you were going, about to go on spring break, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you decided, well, I'm going to go try this this CrossFit, you know, event and 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 compete, right? I, I, am I right? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. So I signed up back in January, but it was on the way to spring break, so I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. And so, uh, yeah, we showed up, and it was in Huntsville, Alabama, on the way to Panama City. It was my first competition, which was – back then it used to be called sectionals. So you went from sectionals to regionals and then to the CrossFit game. So you're going to this CrossFit game, which I think is – you know that you're about to put your body through some sadistic shit, right? So it's yep. – you know, yep. So yep. I don't know. I probably backed out then. But you go through this entire game, and you're competing at the highest level, and you you get to a point where you end up jumping, right? And – 
you try to touch, you, 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 you fall, and you end up taking second place. Am I correct? I'm, I'm, is, ben and I had this what? conversation. Ben is Ben. <laughs> hey, hold ben on, has hold on. Yeah, hey. don't, don't don't overshoot. Because I heard you say one time that your dad, because he was climbing a rope, is climbing a rope, right? But right. you weren't using your legs, and it's because your dad said it only only pussies use their legs when they climb ropes. <laughs> <laughs> that is accurate. That is also accurate. Yeah, I All love right. that. I love All right, it. so you didn't use your legs, right? And, yep. and you don't get you don't win the contest, and you and you fall and. Ben and I had this conversation yesterday, and we're at this right here is the pivotal spot where we're having this conversation. What is your mind? You just took second place. It's your first time. Yep. Right. You're sitting on that stage. They're introducing the guy who wins first place. You're winning second place. What are you thinking in your mind to say, what's the trigger that said, okay, I'm going to do this again? So what is uh, it? What are you yeah. thinking? Yeah, man. So at that time, I'm beyond pissed. Um, I... I like to win, obviously. Like it's cool. I hate losing anything. Uh, I was. Uh, it's just. I. It could be me and my daughter. Like I'm. I'm not one of those parents that lets my kids win. Uh, my wife <laughs> gets good. so good. Solid. so so pissed. You know, I'm. I'm not necessarily a sore loser, but I hate to lose. Like I'll congratulate people that win, uh, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be okay with losing. It's just not who I am. And so for me, man, there was just. I don't even really know how to explain that feeling. Um, but I had, you know, I w went to sectionals kind of relatively unknown, won my sectional, went to regionals, um, ended up winning my region. My goal that year was just to get to regionals, ended up winning the region, went to the game, was basically, you know, I'm never just there to show up, but I'm like, all right, I'm going to get some experience this year. I'm going to give it all I got. But, you know, I want to learn some and, and see how I'm, I'm – what it takes to, to make it even farther the next year. And so um, from there, you know, I'm, I'm leading going into the final three events. And so they put us down in this, uh, the bottom of this sub hub center is what it's called now, but it used to be the uh, Home Depot center. And so literally, usually we kind of find out the event either a day in advance or, you know, a couple of minutes before or whatever. But this time what they did is they put us down in the basement um, they took the top 18 men, top 18 women. Um, they didn't tell us what was going to happen. They took all forms of communication and six by six people leave and they never come back. And so you're starting to like, all right, so is it, is this a setup? <laughs> are they, it's are they awful, killing us? It's awful. It's awful. Right. And so you're like, are there tigers out there? You know, what's happen? So anyway, gladiator, man. You're like, all right. So at this point, I think I had a couple point lead and the way they used to score it is if you get first, you get one point second two points and so on and so lowest points wins right and so I, I had a couple point lead I can't remember what it was and so you know you're in your head you're you're trying to figure out what everything is and so um you don't know if it's one event if it's two events if it's three events if it's six events like what's going to happen is it a one rep max so you're just playing all these games in your head you're trying to like not psych yourself out so um we're walking out there and you know notoriously everybody takes their shirt off you sweat a lot I'm not going to wear a freaking shirt and let my sweat just hold on to whatever. So go and take my shirt off. The director of the CrossFit Games, Dave Castro, who never really gives a shit anyway, but he goes, <laughs> you might want to keep your shirt on. It's pretty effing hot out there. It was 125 degrees on that black mat that we were doing oh, stuff man. on. And so we walk out. He says, all right, here's the workout. 30 push-ups, climb over this wall, 21 overhead squats, three rounds, three, two, one, go. Everybody's like, what? Well, so you go ahead, do the workout. Um, I end up being the only one to finish that first workout. Sounds cool. However, there's still two more workouts that I didn't know about. And so I'm Toast. just completely <laughs> crushed. <laughs> crushed. So literally, your only rest between the next workout is long enough for the director to say, all right, it's, uh, I think it was, I don't even, still don't even remember, but I think it was 21 toes to bar, 21 uh, catches with 95 mm. pounds, three, two, one, go. Um, complete days. You're just, getting pummeled well then you finish there's like a seven minute cap or something finish that and he's like all right final workout is five burpees up and over the six foot wall three rope climbs up the uh, 20 foot rope three rounds per time or 12 minutes three two one go so i do my burpees hop on the rope and i'm like i'll be fine but after doing all that other stuff uh, just completely uh. trash and like i said in the back of my head i'm like all right don't use your legs because that's the pussy <laughs> thing yeah <laughs> And so I, but, I, but legs you know, were allowed, right? You were allowed to use legs. Yeah. Heck okay. Yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> I just had no idea. My man, people were like, 
taking their shoelaces off their shoes, trying to tell me what to mm. like, how to do this. I'm, I feel like I'm, I've had, you know, 15 shots of whiskey. Like you're just completely out of it at this right. point. And I'm trying to struggle up this rope. I end up making it up 20 foot high, uh, touch the cross beam and start to go down and my hands just let go. So I drop 20 feet. Mm. I do the whole, you know, walk it off, get up. Like I'm fine, man. I, I pretty sure I did something to my heel, uh, bruised my, my ass bone. Like it oh. was bad. I ended up getting up the rope three more times. Uh, but you know, at that point you're trying to play math in your head and they take, so from there, they take you back to that same room you're in and you have to drug test. And so you're like, man, I can't pee. I, what's this, <laughs> I have wait, zero I, fluid in my body <laughs> at all right what, now. <laughs> what just happened? Like, you know, did, what's the score? Like really for, so for an hour, I'm playing this game. Like, did I do enough on the first two? Did I lose it on the last? Cause there's still people that didn't finish the workout. The last one, like they're falling off the rope too. So in my head, I'm like, all right, maybe, maybe I still got it. The, the way I found out is they bring us out and I'm just kind of standing off to the side before they call our names up. And I look at the, the big check and, uh, the other guy's name is on it. Graham Holmberg. Um, uh, uh, so that's how I found out. So I ended up losing by three points over the entire weekend. So three places over the entire weekend. And so, yeah, man, it was just, uh, it was a kick in the gut. And, um, you know, I was angry for a while. Um, I really was frustrated. Like, you know, I started getting some, at that point, CrossFit had started to get some sponsorships and stuff like that. So I've been talking to people and doing that, and, uh, doing, running our gym. And I was just, man, I was in a bad spot. Honestly, I was just pissed. I was like, I'd let CrossFit, um, you know, become my identity and who yeah. I was, mm. was like it, yeah. on my performance. And, uh, you know, for me, luckily, like I said, you know, faith has been a huge part of my, my whole life. And, uh, for me, it really got my faith back on track and made it realize that, Hey, CrossFit isn't a, you know, it doesn't define who I am as a human being. Mm. Um, and for me, that was a huge, huge thing that I could just, I could separate myself as an athlete to who I am in, in my faith and in my faith in Christ. And so for me, that was a huge, huge thing. And it, it lit a fire under me at that point where it was like, all right, Hey, you know, let's, let's go back and, and crush this thing. And so for four years after that, I, you know, won four as an individual and then kind of retired to the team thing for, uh, when we, we had our first little girl. And so I've won the games four times as an, on a team as well. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I want to unpack that, that first event just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so yeah. this is, this is your first CrossFit games. So not really knowing what to expect. And, and obviously you just talked through like how cryptic they were through the whole deal, but I want to yeah. talk through that, that last session you're talking about, like, you're so exhausted, you feel intoxicated and yeah. how do you having not, not have any experience in the CrossFit games, first time testing it out. What are you saying to yourself in your head as you're going through each one of those events to keep pushing, like don't listen to your body, keep pushing because, you know, I would say eight years, you know, eight games later, right? Like now you've yeah. trained yourself and you know, okay, right. Hey, this is what it is. Right. But that first one, I mean, that's as Ben mentioned, mm -hmm. like you were wired differently than I think just the normal person to be able to talk yourself through those things. What was that, that you were talking to yourself? What were you saying don't to lose. yourself? <laughs> don't lose. Don't lose. <laughs> Don't lose. Let's win. Keep moving. You know, like, uh, yeah, you're for me, you know, like a lot of the guys, you know, they, there's always the, they're in the beginning, especially, I think it's kind of transitioned. And I think partly because the way I competed, um, you know, in the beginning, everybody's like, you know, I'm just going to stay inside myself. I'm going to do what I can. I'm not going to worry about anybody else. Um, I had a sport background. So, I mean, you're always watching, you're yeah. always, Competition why would you drives not? You. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, heck yeah. Why would you not use what everybody else is doing and try to pace off of other people, try to keep up or try to get ahead? Yeah, so I mean, for me, it was even in those days, I was, you know, you're playing little games in your head. It's like, all right, hey, he's on the bar, try to catch him. Or he's just now getting to the bar. How many reps are you on? See if you can get more reps that next round. And so um, for me, that's just kind of the way, you know, I developed. And like I said, I think having a sport background, a lot of these guys didn't have in the beginning, didn't have a ton of still really don't have a sports background but for me I mean why would you not you know look around at your competition and try to yeah. try to either you know you know either bury them or, or try to figure out what they're doing if they're doing something different that they're going a little bit faster so 
um, I think that was definitely something that helped me early on was having some type of sport background. You, you mentioned earlier your goal that year was to make it to the regionals. Is that correct? Is that what yeah. you said? Yep. So yep. when did it become – because, I've, again, I've heard your story a few times, and, and it seems like – and correct me if I'm wrong – it seems like that first year going into it, you didn't have high expectations. You didn't really know what to expect like we talked about. When did it yep. become like – like Darren said earlier, when did you flip that switch of, no, this is what I want to pursue as a career or as a, right. maybe you didn't know after that first year, but I'm just curious how yeah. it went from, I'm just going to do this to this is now my next 10 years of my life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it was like almost a year to year thing for the first couple of years. Cause I mean, there's, there's money in it, but there's not a, you know, in the beginning, there wasn't a ton of money. Um, it really depended on your performance. You know, like my first couple Reebok contracts, I always joke, you know, everybody talks about, you know, hey, you got a shoe deal and stuff like that. It was like $10,000. <laughs> uh, merchandise, no cash, <laughs> just merchandise. Right? Exactly. <laughs> hey, hey, you can be an ambassador. And I'm like, yeah. nah, like, no. that's the point. So now they're like, hey, 30% we, discount. Yeah. You, right. Well, you know, the, the funniest, funniest thing about the whole deal was that first year. So first place got $25,000. Second place got a $500 gift card to Under Armour. No. What? And two, Seriously? And, That's, yeah, yeah. That doesn't even make sense. And, uh, <laughs> and two weeks later, I got sponsored by Reebok, so I never even got to even use it. <laughs> gift card. That's quite the discrepancy between prize uh, money. Oh. I know, right? Hey, I guess it pays to be first, man. Yeah, exactly. That's the way it is. So. How, how many people are in the crowd that first year? What's what's the environment like? Oh, man. Uh, you know, it was it was cool. You know, it was kind of like grassroots type. You know, it was the first year that was in the big, bigger stadium. Um, in the tennis stadium, man, you probably had, I don't know, five or 6,000 tops, maybe, mm-hmm. if that. Um, it was cool, though, still. Like, you know, that first Friday night, the, any, any of the night events at the, the tennis stadium um, were just awesome. It felt like Friday night light. Yeah, it that's felt cool. just like, you know, it was, it was cool. And so uh, that's actually one of my first my most vivid memories from that first games is I wasn't in the final heat because, you know, I hadn't been there before. And so I actually got to go up to the stands and watch. That was the only time I've ever actually gotten to watch the game. (laughs) And just from the stands, it was just, it was something cool about being able to be down there and compete and then coming up and watching the guys that I'd watched compete, you know, for that, that year before that. So, um, it was, it was awesome. But to go back to your question, yeah, I mean, for the first probably three or four years, I was like, all right, I'm going to ride this out as long as I can. And I'll probably go back to the fire department. Um, to be honest, that was kind of the, and I, you know, stuck with that and still um, had that mentality that, you know, once this is over, I'll go back. And I really enjoyed that, you know, when I was at the fire department. So, uh, and then once we got the gym going and then we've kind of created this brand and done a lot of, you know, programming and um, had the gym and stuff like that, I was like, all right, I don't really have, don't have the time to go back. So, uh, you know, I, I really just enjoy competing. So as long as, as long as the body holds up and I feel like I'm not holding anybody back, I'll, I'll keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So talk us through, okay. So you were an indiv- individual champion for four years. Okay. And then yep. you made the decision to, okay, now I'm going to join a team and I'm going to compete with a team. What was that decision-making process that you're like, okay, Hey, I've, I, I feel like I've accomplished this, this mountain here. Now I'm going to move on to this. What was the thought process for you? Yeah. So, you know, we, me and my wife, we went through, through some like infertility stuff and just, watching her go through that and, you know, always wanting to have uh, a family. We were, I was part of, like I said, a big family growing up. And so um, I wanted that. And I knew that being an individual athlete, I'm an asshole. Like, um, it's just what I am. Like, I'm, to be the best in the world at anything, you have to be selfish. What? Wait, 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 wait. I need you to say that one more time, Rich. This, this is, say it one more this time. Argument I'm, just, I'm, on I'm on won this later. argument off of Rich Froning right now. Go ahead, Rich. He, he True, preaches man. that like, all the time. He preaches that all the time. To, to be the best in the world, you have to be selfish. And there's, like, I, uh, every morning I woke up, my goal was to win the CrossFit game every single morning. When I, all throughout the day, I mean, and I'm, and I'm not proud of, you know, some of the decisions I made, like, you know, I, I let my marriage with my wife, you know, I would, I compromised on some stuff that I shouldn't have compromised. Like I put training ahead of spending quality time with my wife. I am not proud of that, but I provided the life we have now. And I knew once we had kids, I could not do that um, as an individual on a team. I could still compete. I could still scratch that itch of competing. Um, I can still fulfill sponsorship obligations. I can still make a living doing it. Um, 
not to say I don't train probably just as hard, but mentally I can disconnect a little bit more. Mm. Um, I can, you know, if it's seven o'clock at night and I didn't get in all that I wanted to get in and I want to hang out with my kids, I can, I can let that extra little session go. And mentally I don't feel like, um, you know, just, I don't know. It, it would wear on me. Like I couldn't go on vacation. I couldn't, you know, it didn't even matter. It could have been the week after the game. Um, I was already thinking about the next game. It was like Christmas. Remember when you were a kid at, yeah, yeah. At, at Christmas, that next day you're like, well, I got some cool shit yesterday, but man, what's next year? Like Christmas <laughs> is a year away. Yeah. And yeah. so honestly, like I, and I, I got burnt out, honestly, just living like that where it was like, you know, having kids, though they need to be number one like now i wake up and my number one goal is to be a good husband and a father and number two is to win the crossfit game so it's still there like and i i can still you know depending on the time of year i do let some stuff you know like i've learned over the years that come probably march april or april may june uh july or probably like that's game time like yeah you know i'm i'm not going to compromise too much on family side but there may be hey guys i need an hour to get a little extra session in or whatever it is. But my kids luckily now are at the age, you know, I'm in the basement right now. They can come in and out and work out and do whatever and go to the barn with me and work out. So I don't feel like I'm compromising too much, but I just, I didn't want to, I, like I said, like we were just saying, you know, to be the best in the world, anything you got to be selfish. Yeah. And I think the sustainability <laughs> aspect, and you talked about burning out in the, in the, the need to be selfish, to be, great right like that and that's yeah, a real yeah. thing and, and and i don't disagree with you but it's a sustainability aspect because now you know your family life and you know your marriage and fatherhood if that is sacrificed yep. now you're going to resent this this job profession exactly. sport yep. that you're competing in and it sounds like you found a balance i mean obviously yeah. and i don't really agree in balance i think that i think that balance no, is no, balance. is stagnant right like and everything's yep. always moving so so balance to me doesn't exist and we had a guest on here uh, rocky garza that talks about you know it's not balance it's justifying the time that you take away from what you truly value yep. and then you're, yep. you're proud of that and it sounds like you found that yeah, I mean, there's days where I'm a horrible father. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that we all are. Yeah, days, we all are. I mean, Darren, Darren just always worst, is, but <laughs> yeah. but we are, we all there's, struggle. Yes. Days where I wake up or like go to bed, and I'm like, hell yeah, I crushed that. And then the next day, I just fall flat on my face, and I'm like, man, you suck. Yeah. And so yeah, I mean, it's it's every day, and it's for me, it's personally, it's having people that one are gonna hold me accountable, which my wife does a great job of that. Uh, but yeah, having other people that you know are going to tell you, Hey man, you're letting this slide or, or being, being open enough to, to hear it yourself that, Hey, maybe, maybe I need to, you know, let some of this go. And, you know, like you said, it's fluid. Like it's not balance. I, I don't think balance, like you said, exists. It's, it's, it's not possible really. If you mm-hmm. want to be, you know, like I said, the best at anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Th- yeah. These guys make fun of me a lot. Cause I tend to get obsessed about things. And so it's you all, tend to? <laughs> <laughs> you're an extremist, but yeah. just tell me. It's all I think about. It's all I want to do. It, it's it dominates my thoughts. So it sounds like the first four years of your compete, you know, competing life was like that. But I'm curious as to why you're just saying I was I was a competitive guy growing up. To me, doesn't tell the full story. So why was it so important to you that you had to work out so hard and you had to be the best? I, like I said, I, I think it's, it's that mix of everything. I think, honestly, you know, the last couple of years, there's there's some substance abuse that, that runs in my family, and I think mm. sometimes working out's my substance abuse. Hey, you know? I'm with like, you. I'm with you. I look I look back, and I'm like, man, why, why am I, like, I don't need to do that extra 45 minutes to an hour of something. Like, physically, I probably don't need to, mm-hmm. but mentally, I have to. Like, I need that. I need that. I don't know. And so, I, honestly, I think, from a substance abuse side, you know, that might be interesting. I, like it's only one of the only explanations over the last couple of years that I've come up with is like, it's almost like it's a drug for me. Yeah. yeah. Like That's peyote is for me, like working out <laughs> is for, for you and Ben. So yeah. Co- cocaine yeah. for Darren is working out for you. <laughs> a little meth, never hurt nobody. <laughs> hey, you know what? I, I, I'm so big and I, and I know this show, we're really huge on mindset. And our listeners, wait, hold want, on. Have you have you heard an episode yet, Richard? Rich, oh. Richard. Richard, Richard. Wow, you, Richard. 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 Went, you went that far. <laughs> I, I, I feel like we got to know each other. I'm just calling him by his given name. 
What's so, up? Hold on. Here. Let him answer. Have you heard an episode yet? I have oh, not. On the spot, on on the spot hey, man. Dude, why are you putting hey, our guests on blast I like know, that, dude? You're terrible. Hey, you're fine. Guys, you're I, haven't, I haven't listened to an episode either, so <laughs> we're good. My, Darren just got only, subscribed, so. <laughs> my only opportunity to listen or watch anything is Pixar movies. Uh, Mickey Mouse Plus. Yeah. Yep. Yep. There we go. Disney like, Plus. As, Disney Plus. As soon as my kids go to sleep, I'm out. Yeah. No, no. So well, hey, we just started anyway, watching, so you're good. Yeah. Okay. We, right, we just cool. started, I'll, so you're good. I'll listen. So I we're listen can I, to this episode, but I'll listen. There you go. <laughs> so can I finish my question? Continue your okay, question. I just you. had to, I just I mean, had to see where his where his allegiance lies. Okay. It's your show, Darren. Do what you want, man. All right, names on it. Um mindset. We're huge on mindset. We have a lot of listeners that are out there. Some are 18 up to 45, 50. And there's transitions that these these young men and women are going through. Yep. And it's yep. about mindset. And I know CrossFit Mayhem, where you are right now, You, got, I want to dig deep into mindset because I know you have you had a coach. Is it Jim Hensel? That, Jim Hensel, yeah. Yep. So you guys go through this this process this process with the, with the mindset can you break that down a little bit for us for not only us but for our listeners as well yeah so jim honestly i, I met jim it's been probably six or seven years ago he's been a member at mayhem he's been kind of a a culture coach um with some you know like universities he, he played some college football um and for me what was really cool is like i hate the honestly uh, is probably might catch some crap for this. I hate motivation, motivational, like quotes. Yep. I hate it. Mm -hmm. It drives me crazy. Like be the best you like, or <laughs> if you can dream it, you can do it. I, I honestly, I hate that crap. Uh -huh. And so, you know, when I heard Jim was into this, you know, like coaching and, you know, I don't know. I was just like, ah, whatever, man. And then we became friends and he started training with us. And then we started just kind of talking and we just talked through kind of what he was, um, doing and, and what he's, you know, was coaching people on. And what I really like about what he's done. And for me, you know, I, I know who I am and like, I have my values and stuff like that. But what was cool about Jim's whole process is he's not telling you to be a person or be this or be that he's saying, define who you are, figure out who you are, what your values are, what you value, make your decisions based off of who you are. And like, not, you know, don't make up somebody or fabricate something, but like we've defined and, and I've went through his whole process and I knew this, but like one of my, he calls them B's is compete. I know I have to compete in whatever I'm doing. And to my detriment, sometimes like that's who I am. I compete. I have to move and I serve like that's just some, mm -hmm. I sat like yeah. that. Those are just things that were, I feel like I was created with whether that, you know, my upbringing or whatever. And then my values, my three main values are faith, family, and fitness. And so I attach those things to who I am and I make my decisions based on that. So like if a decision comes up and I make my decision and it's based off of those things of who I am and what I believe, and I make that decision and I come back and I'm like, ah, as long as I make those decisions based off of who I am, it can't be wrong for, for who I am or for, for me. Uh -huh. And that's, I guess, why I like what, what he does and what he preaches is, is kind of like, to find who you are as a person and and stand on that. Mm -hmm. It sounds like, I mean, yeah, conviction, right? Solidifying your yep. conviction in who you are. And then it also yep. allows you, it seems to me, and, and uh, I, I don't know Jim, but it seems like it's coaching you to be authentic, right? Correct. And who you yep. are and to be to be, you know, true to who you are and stay that. And then people are drawn to that, right? And then that's right. and that's when you can actually achieve what God created you to to do right exactly. yep. and when you know yep. what that is and you actually like figure out and then you're convicted to those points and make the decisions based off of that i mean that's authenticity at its finest in my opinion yeah yeah here's the deal is like and i it's, it's 50 percent of people are going to like you and 50 percent are probably going to hate you that's just the way it is like mm -hmm. you know and and you got to be okay with that like you know especially in the the modern social media era i mean i i can't tell you i wish we, we've actually talked about, you've seen the celebrity mean tweets thing. We've oh, yeah. talked about taking and doing that just mayhem on all of our comments. <sighs> yes. uh, I, man, I, I like it. You know, I, yeah. I kind of, I kind of, I, I use it for a little motivation. I like to troll them back a little bit. So like this morning, I don't, I rarely tweet. I just feel like it's for me, Twitter's just so political. And I, I just, 
I don't like, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm not trying to push my political agenda on anybody. I just don't like to do that. Right. So I was just like, I, I got something funny to say. I'm watching Mickey Mouse Clubhouse this morning with my kids <laughs> and Donald Duck has, <laughs> has Hey, where is you? We're going. We're this is the good okay, stuff Rich, here. Go this is going <laughs> to be out there. <laughs> It'll get good. Hold on. And so I'm like, I'm like, Donald Duck has pet duck. Like, does anybody else find that weird? That was my tweet this morning. Well, some jerk. <laughs> That's a great question. Comes up. I know, right? Valid point. Yeah, right? that very and valid. So, valid. And so some asshole says, uh, "Where do you keep your second place medal?" Mm. I don't like on that. And oh, so uh, uh, my what? my reply is uh, bend over and I'll show you. So, <laughs> yes! like, I like I like to troll people, you know. And uh, his his only response was well played. So you know, it's like, well played. at least he could, hey, at least he could take it. Sounds like he lived up a yeah. little bit. Yeah. <laughs> he lived up. Hey, hey ra- random sidebar here. Have you heard? Are your kids in the blippy? Oh, God, I hate blippy. <laughs> we, ta- we we talked about hate. I had. To, I have a, two, a three-year-old son and a, and a newborn son, and I'd never heard of this. Okay. And so the other day, I'm, I'm oh, working, man. and I'm hearing this blippy theme song in the background. I had no idea what it was. And so I was just curious if, you, <laughs> if y'all had gone through that stage yet. Dude, so I Googled that guy. They say he makes like 20 million. Years. I heard that. Come on, man. It's insane. He's wearing this stupid costume <laughs> and talking to my – so my son is – He's so into anything like with a motor, tractors. He freaking loves tractors. Uh-huh. And so I've watched – I've watched Blippy probably fifty thousand times talk about tractors. Oh yeah, and I it, is this it, the old it, guy that yeah, no, he's like what mid thirties probably. That's old. Right. Yeah. If he's talking to creepy. kids, yeah, that's yeah. old. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's, weird. It's too old. It's too. We do the teeth weird. brushing yeah. song every night. The, the, his his okay. teeth. Oh, it's yeah. it's terrible. I'm so sick of it by now, and it's only been two I weeks. <laughs> I've got yeah. I've got a, a a daughter that's eight, and so she's kind of in that transition of like the Disney shows, like the older Disney yep. shows, right? And it's so yep. to me it's weird when there's like somebody in their like late 20s or 30s on a disney show like i'm like yep. why like just let it go go do something else like if you've got to be yep. on a disney show and you're like mid 30s let alone making these youtube videos or shows or whatever i mean the old guy that like rates toys like oh, there's yeah. just like yeah. just weird stuff ryan's out world there. ryan's world's out there man i'm telling you ryan's so world's like the, we- the show we had this conversation the other day because one of the guys he doesn't have kids yet he's like Man, I think it's so weird that your kids like to watch other kids playing. And I was yeah. like, that is weird. And then I, but then I started thinking about it. We watch sports. Right. We watch, hmm. we watch other guys and girls do things that we like to do. So it, it really makes, and it, I never thought about it. I was like, yeah, that is weird. And then I was like, oh, but that's what he knows. That's what they know. That's what they want to watch. And so, yeah. but I, for, that's the first time I ever made that connection. <laughs> but still, you, YouTube kids, man, dry, I, it's like, we had to cut YouTube yeah. kids off because there's just some weird stuff that we don't, we don't let, our, yeah. let our kids. But yeah. to your point, right? Like, and you think about this esports phenomenon right now, right? Like, these kids watch other kids play video games. Like, why? Just go play video games. But, like, I mean, the amount of views, the amount of people that are reached through that, more people watch esports than watch actual sports yeah. now. Like, there's more views. And, but, I mean, to your point, it's like, a lot of these kids are watching it to figure out how to do these things and watch the pros, right? So they're yeah. watching the pros do it. Right. So I, I guess it makes sense, but it is it is weird to me. Like it's I'm the person weird. I want to go out and do it. Like I don't want to watch yeah, someone else yeah. do it. Nope, me either. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine my my parents weren't like that. They were like, Hey, if you're not gonna find something to do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find give you something, something to do. Yeah. 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 And so I'm like and I, I struggle with that with our you know, all of our kids are super young, you know. Violet, or Lake will turn six in July, Trice is three, and Violet's uh, two, and so they're still a little bit young. And I mean, if we never give screen time. You know, that's that's a horrible idea. Bad parents do that. Uh, but every day we do that. Uh, well, I was just another thing. Along, my along kids along on the screen you. quite hey, a bit. Darren, hey, Darren just slumped down in his chair. <laughs> the, the iPad is there. You mean, you mean by I no need, screen time? Need, you mean like less than three hours? <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like. <laughs> 30 or 45 minutes here watch this stupid yes. video yeah. and yes. go get something done. Yes. Yeah. i feel awful i'm always like man Don't. they just what what's crazy is they just like as soon as it's in front of their face yeah completely consume yeah oh yeah Com- and it's mm-hmm. so bizarre to me but i mean yeah hey you know you got to get stuff done but luckily for us where we're at it's i mean it's starting to get nice outside the kids have 100 acres where they can go run around and 
and do crazy stuff. So yeah, it's, that's uh, that's awesome. You know, we're I'll, trying to talk Darren into coming up. So I live like north of Dallas. Ben and I live up there. Yeah. And, you know, we got some acreage last year. We're trying to talk Darren into it. D- Darren's yeah, city boy. I'm a city heart, boy, man. I'm like, in Dallas, man. That, and that, yeah. that leads there me to go. this. I mean, you're not just about, I mean, your business acumen is is outside of what you're doing with CrossFit. Talk to us a little bit about the bison farm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we uh, yeah. So honest, honestly, so like I, I didn't really grow up on like a working farm per se. Uh, we had a ton of chores. We had horses for a little while. There's actually a funny underlying story to that. My dad's a cheap ass. And bought a horse that was about three quarters broke, uh, not full broke, for my sister. Cause, it's good enough. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we were raised completely different. Uh, my sister got whatever she wanted. Um, but anyway, different story. Not bitter about uh, it at all. And, no, not bitter at all. So my dad's like, hey, I don't really trust this horse with your sister. Will you break it for me? And I'm like... I, Dad, I've I've never really ridden a horse, and he's like, ah, you'll be fine. I hate horses, but anyway. So, me and my uh, me and my buddy that I grew up with, he lives probably about a mile away. Um, best friend, like I said, doesn't do CrossFit whatsoever, so you know it's a real friend there. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so, like I said, he lives lives about a mile away. He started having kids. We started having kids, and we were like, we want something. Like I want my kids to have to do something, take care of something. Mm-hmm. Um, have some type of chores because they, I mean, honestly, in the world we grow up in and, and what we have, they could be brats mm-hmm. and I don't want them to be brats. So initially it just started as like, Hey, he had some cattle experience. So we we're like, maybe we'll do some cattle and, uh, look into that. And then we really started researching bison or buffalo and they're just such a, an awesome animal. Just what they have gone through from basically being extinct, yep. um, numbers you know originally were around 30 or 40 million and then going down under the thousands mm. just seeing um how cool they were and i mean it's it's a way cooler marketing ploy too it's kind yeah. of buffalo versus cattle everybody has cattle yeah, yeah. and so um yeah so we we decided to start kind of a bison farm and then from there we've it's, it's kind of grown honestly originally it was just for the kids to have something to take care of and then now we have some sticks some bars some jerky we're working on some like ground beef um, and stuff like that. So it's, it's been really cool. And my, my wife is the opposite of an outdoors person hates the outdoors. And, uh, it's funny to kind of see her. She's like, I want to pet them. And I'm like, they're basically wild animals. Though, and, you, <laughs> and She's got this mission right now that every, every afternoon she goes out there and takes a loaf of bread and feeds the herd, uh, you know, pieces of bread and tries to pet them. And I'm like, that's a horrible idea. <laughs> yeah. But slowly but building she, trust. <laughs> yeah. She swears. She swears she's building trust with them. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's been cool to see the kids like actually take to it. And, you know, my son is like every morning we're Custer because Custer's our, our bull that we have. And, um, so you look out and just looking out in the front yard, basically the front yard, it's on the mm-hmm. other side of the driveway, but, uh, just seeing seeing Buffalo roam out there, it's awesome. it's been pretty well, awesome. So it's on. Yeah. They're on your land that you're at now in, in yep. Tennessee. Okay, okay. Yep. Yep. So how many how many head do you uh, do you call it head with with bison? Yeah, hey, yeah, easy. Okay. That's, not, that's not this kind of show. Bud. Holy smokes! You <laughs> add, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> sorry, I had to take the shot. Yeah, okay. Uh, so how, yeah, how many how many bison do you have? Currently, we have uh, eight. Eight cows and um, one bull. Okay, and then they're all the cows. Um, well, it may turn into that type of show. Uh, they've been exposed <laughs> to a bull, uh, so mm. they should calve any time in the next probably couple weeks. So, oh, nice. uh, we probably have anywhere from seventeen to eighteen pretty quick, and so um, it'll it'll get That's real awesome. here a little bit. There, That's awesome. oh, dude, there. I was thinking about the bull. He, I was like, dude, how do you become the bull? <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, I know, right? <laughs> how do I get that job? <laughs> That's the dude I want to be. Well, my thought was, how many, other than the zoo, Darren, how many wild animals have you yeah. seen in person? You too. <laughs> Dealing with you two knuckleheads every day. That's the close I get to yeah. wild animals. Dude, that, the, so the, I got comfortable. We, had, we started out with four just to kind of figure out what the hell we were doing to make sure we didn't kill them. And then we got four more uh, cows. And then three weeks ago, we got Custer the bull. And, dude, I, I was kind of comfortable about, around the females enough that, like, you know, you got to be smart around them, but I wasn't super intimidated by them by the time um, we got the bull. But man, the bull, he's 1,900 pounds and it's Goodness. all in his head and shoulders. It's oh, like he's, his, the back of his hump is probably six foot tall. It's oh my insane gosh. how Goodness. big this thing is. 
So how long yeah, until he, you actually strap a saddle on and try to ride him? <laughs> you know, break Man, him. I don't. My wife has been googling halter broke buffalo for the past three or four weeks. I, I, it may happen to one of those. I'm not getting on Custer. Yeah, He's, yeah. dude. He Just like you give powerful. him a, a loaf of bread. Yeah, you give him a, you know some bread, and then as soon as you run out of bread, he starts doing this like head thing and like putting his like. Hooves yeah. down, and you're uh, like, I'm gone. Bro, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going. You just described Custer as doing all upper body lifts. <laughs> yeah, he is right. no, he does no lower body. <laughs> he's, a, he's a big boy. All right. So I want to I want to come back a little bit to CrossFit, you know, because yep. obviously this is a platform for you to do a lot of things that you love. Obviously, you love doing CrossFit. But for those of the listeners that don't understand, right? Because CrossFit over the years, and especially early on, there was a lot of misconceptions about what the sport was. And, you know, as Kenny, yep. Kenny Powers would say, you know, that these guys just want to be the best at exercising, right? But, right, right, right. but there's a lot of misconceptions about what CrossFit brings, right? Obviously, it's a different strategy. It's, it's different execution. But to me, what is the most intriguing is the community, that's yep. that that CrossFit brings, but talk us through how CrossFit has evolved from you know mid early two thousands to now because you've been a part of it and really kind of at the forefront of progressing the sport. Right. So I, I honestly I think of CrossFit almost as two different things. So um, you have CrossFit the training methodology, mm-hmm. and so that's CrossFit Mayhem. I have a gym here in Cookville, Tennessee, and man, we have some of the most incredible people that they didn't want to work out. You know, they're just trying to get fit for life. They're, you know, we have our youngest member because we have a CrossFit kids class, which is basically playing games and doing that type of stuff. And our youngest members are four and five years old. And we have a guy that's 78 years old that <laughs> still comes in and, and works out. So you have that. And that's the community aspect. That's what you're talking about. And so what a lot of people think of when they see CrossFit or think, you know, it's dangerous is CrossFit games. And it's a professional sport. And it's the top 1% of the top 1% of all people that do CrossFit. And I, that's the, the kind of the misconception that we're trying to get away from is like, you know, obviously what a lot of people's first introduction to CrossFit is the game. Mm-hmm. And it is, it is a professional sport. And with any professional sport, there's injuries. You know, like if you're working out three and four or five times a day, you're going to get like the chances of you getting injured. Granted, you know, I've been competing. This is my 11th year. And the most major thing that I've had is my knee scope because I tore my meniscus. Um, and so, you know, as long as you're taking care of yourself and smart, then you're, you know, like I said, it's a professional sport. There's, there's inherent risks that come with that. Yeah. From the community side of it, as long as you find a good affiliate, somebody that knows what they're doing, a good coach, and you can check your ego at the door, cross it safe. And it's awesome. You know, the, the community aspect that you're talking to, the people that come in day in and day out and suffer together. And, you know, we always joke and, and we were talking earlier about, you know, that suffering and, and it, you growing as a person. But when somebody's suffering alongside of you, you yeah. know what they're going through mm-hmm. and you can connect on a different level, I think. And so, you, you know, there's this accountability that's there. There's the competition that's there. But then, like you said, the, the community aspect of it, of that shared suffering and people um, just knowing each other in almost a deeper meaning, like not to sound corny or anything. But like I said, if you know what somebody's going through and suffering alongside of them, man, there's you can't really replace that. And that's why some of my teammates over the years are some of my closest friends, because, you know, I suffered for them. They suffered for me. And it's just you 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 have this deep connection, you know, like, like all you guys with team yeah, sports, yeah. like mm-hmm. you're going to, I, for me, and that's what I found on the team side is I'm going to push in competition so much harder for somebody else than myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So true. Yeah. Man. And that's one thing for me, you know, I was, I was probably the, uh, the guy that was hardest on CrossFit. Cause when I was training as a professional athlete, it's just different mentality, different methodology, right? right? Different execution, it's- because there's different things that, that we have to be, you know, really focused on improving. But one of the things that I really underestimated about CrossFit is I always loved fitness. It was always really important to me. Well, when I retired, now I was isolated by myself. I didn't have that accountability you just talked about. I didn't have that team mentality, whereas if I didn't show up that day, and and to be honest, like I've struggled with my fitness journey since retiring. When I thought like, man, I'm going to elevate it because now I don't have to do you know these heavy back squats yeah. and these power cleans and all these things that really like I don't enjoy doing. 
and I could just do the right. stuff that's functional for me and my body can feel better. And I don't have to carry all this mass around. And I've struggled because of the lack of what CrossFit I think brings. Mm -hmm. And so yep. it, it's, it's something and, and it maybe share something that you can about the misconceptions and maybe, and maybe just some bad gyms and some bad yep. coaches. And I think that's probably yep. what's really hard about, you know, uh, someone like yourself. That's like, look, I, I know what the sport can be, but there's people out there misguiding. And you talk about injuries, like hurting people, pushing people beyond what they're ready to take on. Uh, but right. if, if someone's like listening to this, like, okay, I really want a piece of that team atmosphere. I want that accountability. What should they look for in their local CrossFit gyms? Yeah, I think, you know, originally most people are like, well, I got to get in shape before I go do CrossFit. Mm. That's kind of actually the opposite. That's why, you know, that's why CrossFit is really there. And like I said, we're looking at CrossFit in two different lights. You're looking at CrossFit the gym or training methodology versus CrossFit the sport. And so when you're looking for a gym, you want a gym that concentrates on CrossFit as a training methodology, not CrossFit for athletes. You know, like we don't have really a competitor's course at Mayhem. We don't do anything like that. We almost separate ourselves from our, our members at, at the barn is where we do most of our training. And we have open gym for athletes that want to compete and do stuff like that. But the classes, it's, I mean, it's your soccer moms. It's your, you know, one, one time a day, um, people working out. It's, you know, it's that type of stuff. And so, um, yeah, it's just, if you're going to an affiliate, you want to walk in, you want to make sure the coach is, you know, walking around doing their, you know, they're actually coaching. They're not just kind of standing there on their phone. They're not just being a cheerleader, you know, like you'll walk in sometimes and you can tell the difference in a good coach and somebody who's just there. Like I, I call them a cheerleader because it's always, you know, push harder, go, you know, do more. Here's do one more. Basically, you want somebody that's walking around kind of seeing and correcting. The problem is there's kind of a happy medium because you don't want to take away, you know, CrossFit's big thing is intensity. So you don't want to drop the intensity down so far by making too many corrections. Um, but, you know, that's what the purpose of a warm-up is. The purpose of a lot of gyms and um, places make you go through a kind of a, an intro class mm -hmm. to teach you kind of all the movements, to teach you. Um, you know, just different things to think about. That's something that we, we used to require was a three week long intro class. Now we allow people to get with a coach and do one on ones to get through that quicker instead of waiting the full three weeks. Um, but we require every athlete that comes or every, you know, member that comes through the door, they have to go through some type of, of, kind of a, a checklist and making sure they know what they're doing before they're just released to the wolf. Yeah. And that's the key. I think that, that to me, that that's been the key. And I, I remember, you know, I, of course I played in the nineties and I'm the old man in here, but I remember training. We we've advanced so far as far as training so far. and technique and whatnot. And I remember back in the day, we were bench pressing. We we're going way beyond the threshold incline. Right. We do a bench press and the, the next step would be incline set. What's wrong with that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> way <beyond. laughs> but it was just you know the training was so different now things with technique things have changed so much and i know at mayhem are you guys going through that process is when I, and you just said it a little bit but when they come in how long is that process as far as teaching technique uh, every day i mean you, you don't really get away from teaching technique you're still i mean we have members that have been there since the beginning of crossfit mayhem at in 2000 well when we reopened uh in 2012 and we still in warm up in you know strength stuff they're still we're still correcting technique we're still you know that's what we look for even in our coaches is somebody that can seeing and correcting is the biggest thing i think in coaching especially in crossfit with you know, if you're letting people, you know, use a barbell and doing these high skill movements, the Olympic lift, you need somebody that can, can keep people safe. And sometimes, you know, we've, there's been times where we've maybe even lost members because we wouldn't let them go as heavy as they wanted to, mm. uh, with poor technique, because it's not worth it. You know, it's mm, not right. worth blowing a disc or blowing something like that when somebody doesn't know what they want to, or what they're doing, but they, they can't, you know, disconnect their brain enough to think that, Hey, Maybe this isn't smart for my body. So uh, it's, it's a happy medium. But, yeah, I think it's, a, it's an ongoing thing. Even with us as professional athletes, there's still things that I could clean up technique-wise or, you know, I, if I have something that's kind of bugging me and I'll change up the way I move and I get in a, a, a weird movement pattern and 
over time, I, I have to retrain stuff. So, um, that's, I, I think one of the beauties of CrossFit is you're, you're always trying to learn and you're always trying to get better in certain areas because you're never really going to, um, you know, master anything when there's so many things to get good at. Right. Okay. Hold on. I want everyone to know, like hear that, right? This is, this is the man that is the best to ever do the sport. What he just said is he's always learning and you're never going to master everything. So I think that just nope, in nope. life, mm-hmm. make sure that make sure you understand that you may be the best, you know, salesperson in your, in your company or, you know, the best scientist or engineer or whatever it is you do, but you never truly master it and always progressing, always being better, always refining. Cause you can always get better, which leads me to my next question is, so you've been in the sport for a long time. How have you seen the actual sport change, whether it's methodology or whatever over the, you know, the last 15 years or so that the sport's been around? Yeah, I, I, it's changed immensely. You know, like just from equipment wise, we were talking, you know, we've been doing a bunch of YouTube live stuff and a bunch of the questions we get are, are similar to this. And it, you know, how has it changed? It, one of the big things is equipment. You know, when I started, it was like we had a rower and we had an Airdyne. I mean, you mm. guys remember the Airdyne. Oh. And now you, and I, now you have ski erg, Airdyne stuck. Oh, oh, dude, don't yeah, even bring up yeah, Airdyne. Hold on. Hold don't on. bring pause, that up. Sorry, pause your story real quick. Oh. So, so uh, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm Darren's trainer, and both of us got the Rogue Echo Bike not long oh, ago. Man. Death. Oh, and it's awful. It's, the, it's the most brutally awesome thing I've ever done in my life. I tried to burn Turn the up. bike the other day, man. I went outside, <laughs> threw some light, <laughs> blew it off. I set it on fire. I don't know what happened, Ben. <laughs> Just showed up, and it was like this. <laughs> What's so bad about the Echo Bike is it's belt driven. You know, like we've had assault bikes for years, and the chain, it, they're just a different. I don't even know how to explain it, but with the chain, once you get get it going, it's kind of like it rolls. Yeah, kind of there, mm-hmm. and you can kind of let go, and it'll kind of stay around the same area. With that Echo Bike, man, you let off, it's letting Stop. off. Yeah. Like there's just yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> there's no way around. No, it. no ha- way around. Yeah, it. I haven't done one of those, but the Echo Bike is it's unbelievable. The the training, both both physically and mentally. Uh, yeah, I mean, just I, like I have Darren, I'll have Darren do like 100 calorie repeats just for the mental aspect of, yep, I've yep, got to do a hundred calories and then I've got to do it again. Yeah. And that's what we talk about is yeah. Physical training. And this is, this is what's great about CrossFit is phys- the physical aspects and benefits of training are, are great. And, and that's awesome. But to me, but what I've appreciated mental, more yeah. than that is the yeah. mental benefits that I've had from, you know, obviously hormonal, but uh, just pushing right. through things that you wouldn't yeah. normally do. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, there's been a a ton of things that I wouldn't have done outside of either competing, um, having to do it because of competition or in training to get better because it might come up in competition. But yeah, going back to the, you know, over the years, like the, I feel like the first four or five years, no, we didn't know what the heck we were. When I first started CrossFit, basically they told you you could work out once a day. And if you worked out twice a day, you were going to die. And you know, Though I remember the first day we ever did t- two workouts a day, we did a workout in the morning. We watched a video, me and my cousin, and uh, we were like, "Hey, we already worked out today, but that workout looks kind of fun. Should we try that, or do you think we'll die?" You know, like I just remember that. <laughs> or do you and think we, we'll die? <laughs> and we worked out. We worked out twice, and we were like, "Oh wow, this feels good. Let's do it again." And so that we were, this you know, in good. the beginning, the volume of it. You know, we were crazy because we did so much volume and now everybody's doing that and everybody has a specialty coach in certain areas you know uh every a lot of people have coaches that do their programming i've always i i program for myself i don't i don't want to have other than you know like swimming or or biking or uh, running that type of stuff we've had uh uh, chris henshaw help us with but i don't want to like be able to blame somebody else like i know what i need to do and i know you know Luckily, with the team now, it's like we kind of program by committee. I'm like, hey, what have we done already? How do you feel? What do we need to work around? That type of stuff. And then we make up a workout every day. And so it's it's accountability on myself versus putting it off on somebody else. And then if we don't win, it's like, oh, it was their fault because the programming stuff. Right. So, um, you know, along the way, we've learned a lot on what not to do. Uh, but <laughs> by doing know, it, though. That, that's, exactly. And so I, I don't feel like over the somebody said you think if you could go back as an individual would you change anything and 
Yeah, I don't think, and it goes in life, you know, I wouldn't be in the place I am or be the person that I am if I go back. You know, are there things that I regret doing? Hell yeah. But are there things that I would change? No, I can't. I couldn't. I wouldn't be the person I am right now. Yeah. yeah. As yeah, a team member, but as a team member, you, you're bringing on, again, you're bringing on team members that are coming in and out, right? Am I correct by that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What are you looking for? Oh, man. Um, you know, obviously there needs to be some type of physical um, standard, I guess. They need to have at least some pieces and parts like we can work on things but I mean you got to fit in you got to be able to one you got to be able to to uh you know be a part of the team you got to be able to work well with others uh but also you got to be able to take some shit you know yeah. we we uh we mm-hmm. we're hard on each other in a, in a good way you yeah. know but I feel like I feel like there's always one person that takes the most of it though but um yeah I mean honestly since I first started on the team I, I'm the only one that's left uh, I almost basically every three or four years, people get so burnt out by doing what we're doing and the <laughs> amount of stuff that we're doing. I think they're like, all right, I'm done. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I just, uh, it's just, it's the way I, uh, way I am, I guess. Yeah. 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 We, we want to be mindful of your time, obviously. So la- last few here, we talk about transitions, uh, transition yep. from one thing to the next. And, and for all three of us, football ended in our minds prematurely. It ended before we were right. ready. And so for you, right. you transitioned from baseball to CrossFit. Luckily, you had CrossFit there to take your yep. mind off of the baseball com- competition. But as you look forward, what are you doing? Or maybe you haven't thought about it, but what are some things you're doing to get ready for the transition post-competition? Yeah, and I, man, it's, it's something it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to come to grips with. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, it's, it's been such a big part of my – part of it's hard. You know, pieces of it are hard for me to, to get used to, but – some of it I, I feel like you might look forward to, you know, this year with all this stuff going on, um, there was going to be no games, especially for, you know, they're trying to figure out something for individuals. Um, it was looking like teams were going to get axed, but we decided to, to host some type of team competition here oh, cool. um, in August. So we're working on that right now. So I, I can't, you know, identity's definitely not in me competing, but I'm going to get as much as I can while I can, you know, I know right. um, there's, there's one thing that's undefeated and that's time. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, making sure that I'm doing things at home, right. Um, trying to get business stuff and you can still compete in those areas, you know, like, uh, there's still, still some competition in the business world and and doing those types of things. And so, uh, you know, is, is for me this last year, I I programmed a couple events, you know, some sanctionals and stuff like that. So I really enjoy that side of it. Uh, I'm just trying to grow business side doing, We've been doing some of these uh, YouTube lives and Instagram lives and just, you know, getting people, uh, connecting with the community in, in ways that we probably wouldn't have because we were so hyper-focused on competition that um, you don't want to, you know, want to take the extra burden of, you know, setting up a camera and talking back and forth and slowing yourself down. And so it's, it's being mindful of those things. And that's kind of where, you know, the fitness world is going. I feel like it's almost like, a, like everything else virtual. Yeah, mm-hmm. And so, you know, just trying to get ahead of the curve really and, and trying to be smart and look out and have a good group of people around me, not just on a team side physically, um, but, you know, business wise, yeah. having, you know, people that work with us and for us that um, are, are looking into the future and, and trying to partner with, you know, different companies, different people to make sure we're, we're out ahead of this thing. So, um, and that goes back to mindset stuff. It's like, if you know who you are and you're confident in that, and you're just making those decisions based off of that, then, uh, you really can't go wrong. I like that. Okay. So Ben asked like the important, really like, you know, thought provoking questions. So I'm going right. to ask the, the meathead stupid questions. Okay. So, uh, so you've been around a lot of athletes, uh, been around yep. a lot of competition. What is like the yep. craziest slash grossest thing that you've seen in your time with CrossFit? And I'll, I'll let you think oh. about it because like for me, right. my answer, you know, being around football players is we we're playing San Francisco one year and a D lineman <laughs> is literally just standing, looking at our huddle, peeing all over himself, like yeah. on the field, not like in a pile or anything yeah. like that, but just like, like eye contact with our quarterback <laughs> and he's peeing all over himself. That's like not just, their grossest. He just told a story yeah, the other day. Rich, Rich, he that just told PG. us a story the other day where he was in high school. He, re- he wrestled a guy with two assholes. <laughs> Like that was that is his gross. Face. Yeah, well, his thank face. you, Rich. That's that's the face we had. He was in a wrestling match, and he wrestled a guy that had two hey. assholes, and his name was Dub Dubs. 
Dubs. Yeah. Dubs. Yeah. Yeah. Dubs. Yeah. For those by watching, the way, you, you, re, uh, you regurgitating <laughs> stories is not your strength, man. You butcher that <laughs> left and right. But let the man speak. Let the man speak. <laughs> Two assholes. Was he born that way? He was born that and way. Two, and two, how do you know he had two assholes? That's what we said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that hand. So. You had to figure it out. Right, so there's a technique in wrestling called checking the oil, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. I've got some wrestling. A lot of my family wrestles. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have to go back and listen to that episode. Checking the oil. Oh, man. <laughs> It's Jack a butt drag, oil. man. Butt drag. You just one digit oh, slips, you know, about on accident. Okay, let's, let's, move let's move on. All right. Sorry. So, so craziest thing that you oh, you've oh seen God. or happened to you or. So, uh, 2000, what was it? 16, 2016. We're doing this super long workout. Uh, it's the team version based off of the workout Murph that everybody knows. Mm-hmm. One mile run, yep. uh, hundred pull ups, 200 push ups, 300 squats, one mile run. So the team version we had, it was Crazy. six person teams at the time. You had to carry one person on the team on a litter, like a, like a, like if somebody's injured, they're laying on a litter. You had to carry them on a litter for a mile, one rotating out who was on the litter. Oh. Then you had to come into the stadium all wearing a vest. You had to do a uh, thir- hundred of these worm push presses. You had to do two hundred chest to bar between the six of you. A hundred squats with this worm that's like at that point I think it was like six or seven hundred pounds and then do that one mile thing again. So it's a really long workout. And so we're on the pull-up section, which is about halfway into this workout. We're probably 30 minutes in, 20 minutes in. And one of the girls on the team is squatting down and voluntarily goes, I'm peeing. And sure enough, I look down and she's, she's peeing in the middle of the stadium. TV cameras, a uh, similar story, but yeah, wow. she's just in a, in a squat, like, looks like she's resting in between her set. And she just let it and go. Looks at, and, but she just told, like, if I hadn't known, or she hadn't told me, I would have never known. Yeah. But we make eye contact and she goes, I'm peeing right now. And I was like, <laughs> which is shit you are. Right? Yes. Yes, you are. Hey, but you know what? Sacrifice for like the team. I'm not slowing us down. I'm not going anywhere. Hey. Yeah, she didn't. She yeah. did not. What, following up on that, <laughs> what's the the hardest workout you've ever, whether in the games or not? Maybe maybe you programmed it yourself. What's the hardest workout that you're like? I'm never doing that ever again. There's a lot of them actually. There's probably too many to list. But honestly, going back to that first games in 2010, like I said, that I've never quite been to that like we call it wad drunk workout drunk, mm. where you're just like completely. Just, I've been to in, in a couple of the open workouts that we have to do to, to qualify. I've been in like some dark places in those, but man, just the, the heat of all that, the just, I don't know. It was, it was yeah. all, I've not touched any of, I actually need to go back and just do that whole thing again. I've never once done that again. Um, but yeah, it was, there's just something about that whole experience that I, it was not pleasant. Hey, you know what? Wow. Before we go, because I know you got a question, Ben. Yeah. Touch on that dark place, man. I mean, just yes, give us good. give us some insight because yeah. there's so many of us yeah. that, that there's, you know what? There's so many people that have never gone to that place. Right, right, man. I I don't really. It's, man, it's hard to put into words. It's like there's a, there's a place that you go that you know maybe not just physically but mentally you can't push any far. You want to push farther. Um, you're trying to push farther, but you're just it's like you're stuck. You know, it's just. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a bad place, but once you get out of it, it's kind of a cool place that you've been. Um, it's kind of a place that you don't want to go, but you kind of want to go again, you know, mm-hmm. like there's yep. like, <laughs> yeah. as, as thick and twisted as that sound. I remember, and this is kind of a, it wasn't quite that dark place, but it was a place like I was starting to get to a, a painful place. You know, I had this meniscus thing and it would not get right for probably 18 months. I found mm. this CEO in town and Jeez. he did some just manual, simple manual therapy and cleared it up. And I remember this was last year because I'd just come out of that. And I remember being on an, an, on an echo bike doing repeats of like 20 or 25 calories, but hard. Um, and I remember, you know, just the full pain in the legs, the dark place and thinking to myself, I like this. I like, I like being able to push and feel this pain mm. and not my knee pain, you know, like, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. like, I, I can hurt in a, in this, 
physical way versus like an actual injury Three pain. Yeah. yeah. And I, it was like, it was a cool spot and it, it put everything into perspective. It was like, man, I'm lucky to get to yeah. go to this place. <laughs> yeah. yep. I'm lucky to have experienced that. And so for me, that was last year. I was like, man, that, was, that was a cool, cool spot to be in. Cause I'd never been to that spot before, but I was like, man, I enjoy this. Like yeah. I want to get back to this. So yeah. it was cool. You know, that, and that's the thing when I, when, yeah. when you're in competition, there's times when you, when you're training or when you're in competition, even at the football level, you get so fatigued and you get to these places, a dark place. And I can remember, yep. You know, when I get to that dark place, I'm praying. Like, I'm having this conversation yep. with Jesus. Like, I'm serious, <laughs> man. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm oh, having a, I'm a strong conversation. But there's so many people that have been on the outside that have never been there. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I feel bad for those people. Yeah. Because yeah. It, they've been, they've cheered and maybe they've just watched on the outside. But until you've gone there, you can never appreciate what never. athletes have to go through. Yeah, and so, like, it, I always come back to, and, you know, I, I don't want to get too spiritual, and like, but faith is a huge part. And there's actually a part in the Bible where Jesus is talking about, when he's about to get crucified, that he is praying, and in so much grief, mm. thinking about what's about to happen, he sweats blood. Mm, yeah, yeah. And, yep. and I, I, when I'm about to compete, I hate, like, I get to that point where I'm like, I hate, why do I do this? <laughs> yeah. Like, why, why do I put, I don't have to put myself through this. Mm -hmm. Why am I doing like I get so worked up oh, and like yeah. I still get that way 11 years later yeah. <laughs> and it's not even the games. It could be, you know, some local competition. I hate that feeling. Yep. As soon as that clock goes, though, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. then when it's done, I love it. Yep. And yep. So, but I'm, I always go back to that. Hey, even Jesus knew what he had to do mm -hmm. and knew what was going to happen and how miserable he was going to be. And he did it. I you know, like it. I can I and what I'm going to go through is nothing, nothing compared, compared to, to that. Yeah, exactly. yeah, man. And yep. so for me, like, I didn't want to get too spiritual, but for me, that's what drives man, me. Man, go like, spiritual, man. We got, we got no issues with that on, <laughs> on right. here at all. all right. So good. please, good. please, so for, I love for, it. For me, that's, that's where in 2010, that's where I went, was like, you know, what, what I do is nothing. So I have a tattoo on my side. It's Galatians 614, and it's, may I never boast in anything except for the cross, Lord Jesus Christ, which has been crucified to me and out of the world. So that keeps me saying, hey, it doesn't matter – it doesn't matter what you do in CrossFit. Like it does not matter. It matters what Christ did for us. And for me, that's, mm -hmm. that's what go. drives me. And that's, that's what pushes me every day. Love it, man. Good. Love it. Go ahead. Well, yeah. So we like to end every episode with this question. You mentioned earlier, you wouldn't go back and change anything. So I'm not asking you to go back and change anything, but yep. you can go back to any point in your journey, in your life, whatever, wherever you want to go. And you can tell yourself one thing, where do you go? And what do you tell yourself? Man, I go at, at any point and say, you're going to be all right. Yeah. You're going to be all right. Yeah. There is there is one thing I had that I, when I left, so I, I left Walter State was where I was playing baseball. They won the junior college national championship that year. So I do hate that I don't have a ring. <laughs> Stick it out just a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah. it, is it is there, you know, but hey, I wouldn't be where I am and, and – uh, I uh, wouldn't be who I am today. So. That's right. I love that. I would like to have. I would like to have a junior college national championship. Yeah, that's, love that's that, awesome, man. I love that. <laughs> well, hey, thank you so much for for taking your day with us and time. And this is this has been an incredible show. Yes, it is. And mm -hmm. I, I, I love the man that you are, what you stand for. Um, you know, I love that your identity is in something bigger than what you do, right? Like that's that's that. so important, man. Mm -hmm. And and you know, good luck uh, as you go forward. We we got to make it out to Tennessee here. Come on, pretty man. Quick. Yeah, come up, and train at the barn, or come train wherever. So. Have you got, have no, you guys seen have pictures? Got, have you guys yes. seen pictures of his barn? Yes. By the way, yeah. Yes. Oh, dude, you got the dream set up. Like it's perfect. We love it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Love yeah. It. And yeah, we all, you guys welcome anytime. Thanks, thank man. you, man. Yeah. Appreciate Thanks, you. Man. Appreciate you. But thank you, man, and all the best to you. And we look forward to continuing to follow you, man. Appreciate it. All Thanks, right, man. Rich. Have a good one. Thanks, brother.